Hello friends, welcome to Science for Juniors with me, SRK and my lab assistant Binny. Hello! Oh Binny, can you get me those files kept on that table? Oh sure professor! The world of science is so wonderful! What happened? Oh, nothing! Oh, I'm fine! Uh, 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 here's your file. Are you alright? Uh, yes, I guess my shoes are too slippery. Hmm. Slippery shoes reduce the friction and make you fall. And that... Oh, friction? What is friction? And what does it have to do with me falling there? Well, friction is a force that ensures that you don't slip. Why don't we go to the virtual world and learn in detail about friction? Let's begin the module on friction. What is it? With what we see. Athletes are required to run at top speeds. Their shoe soles have specially designed patterns underneath on the soles. Why would they need to wear rigged sole shoes? Can't they run really fast wearing simple canvas shoes? Let's find out the answer to this question in the module on friction. What is it? Where we study friction and its causes. What factors does it depend upon? Let's consider a box that appears to be smooth macroscopically. Any surface, no matter how smooth it appears, has large number of irregularities on it at microscopic level. The moment any surface B is placed on A, interlocking of irregularities takes place. These interlocked surfaces will resist any tendency to move. Due to the interlocking of irregularities, there appears a force that always opposes the motion between the two surfaces. This opposing force is called friction. Now let's see what does this frictional force depend upon. Smoother surfaces will offer less friction. For example, a rubber wiper sliding on the glass surface feels very less friction. That's because here the two surfaces in contact are very smooth. On the other hand, a wooden stool kept over a rough cemented floor will feel more friction. Friction depends upon the smoothness of the two surfaces in contact. Smoother surfaces in contact offer less friction. Rougher surfaces in contact offer more friction. It is easier to pull a lighter object. It is difficult to pull a heavier object. It is easier to pull lighter weight object than heavier weight object as the lighter body experiences lesser friction. Friction is more for heavier bodies than for lighter bodies. So remember that friction on a body depends firstly on the extent of smoothness of the two surfaces in contact. Smoother surfaces will experience lesser friction. Rougher surfaces will experience more friction. Secondly, heavier bodies experience more friction than lighter bodies. So, Binny, now you understand what is friction? Yes, um, friction opposes the motion between two surfaces. Right. Can I ask something? I was just wondering, what all could be possible without having to worry about friction? Yeah, you may suggest some examples which you think don't require any friction. Okay, looking at oneself in the mirror doesn't require friction? Yes, you are right, Binny. Very expected example from you. Next. Um, making chapatis won't require friction. Yes, of course it requires friction or else the chapatis will keep slipping. Lighting a matchstick, I'm sure has got nothing to do with friction. Of course, it's got everything to do with friction. You can't light a matchstick without the frictional force between the stick and the surface of the matchbox on which it is rubbed against. Oh really? I think there is still a long way to go before I actually begin to appreciate friction. 
I still don't understand what it had to do with me slipping. Well, it had a lot to do, Binny. Let's first go to the virtual world and understand how friction assists us in walking. Oh, it does? Yes. Now let's hit the virtual world. Ever wondered that if friction always opposes the motion between two surfaces in contact, then how do we walk? Surprisingly, we walk because of friction. As we try to take a step forward, we push our foot backward. Friction holds our shoe to the ground, allowing us to take the next step forward. In other words, friction assists us in walking. It's time to answer the question raised at the beginning of this module. Athletes prefer rigged shoes over the canvas shoes. This is because they would require rigged soles which being rougher than canvas soles will offer greater friction. Greater friction offered by rigged shoes will assist athletes to run at high speeds. Let's take an example. The box lies here with largest face down. The little girl fails to pull through. The box now lies with smallest face down. Will the box move now? The answer is no. The opposing friction that the little girl has to overcome is the same in both the cases. Friction does not depend on the area of contact. As the weight of the box remains the same in both the cases, the opposing friction experienced will remain the same. So for the same force applied by the girl, the box will fail to move. Oh, now I understand why I fell. These slippery shoes have less friction with the floor when I walk. Exactly, Binny. You are becoming smarter. Huh? Yes! What was that, Binny? Why did you shout at the top of your voice? If you keep shouting at those decibels, my ears will stop functioning. Anyways, so why did you shout? Um, I was just wondering, it will be easier to drag the chair when I'm sitting on it rather than you sitting on it. Well, yes. As you learned just now, friction depends upon the weight of the body. More is the weight of the body, greater will be the friction opposing. Yes, that proves it. Proves what, Binny? I'm feather light in comparison to you. That can't be as funny as you are trying to make it out. But it is. Hmm. I was wondering how the world would have been if the force of friction didn't exist. Oh, you want to know that? Yes, of course. Then let's go to the virtual world and find out. Let's challenge our brains. What if friction vanishes? The life would be a difficult place to live without friction in action. All of us would be slipping and sliding all the time. Nobody will be able to walk or run without friction. Athletes can no longer run on the racetracks. They will simply slip on their racetracks. No races. Man wouldn't have made fire hundreds of years ago. Rubbing stones involve friction. In the absence of friction, mankind would have never discovered fire. Man would have never evolved to the world we see today. Oh my God! It will be impossible for us to live without the existence of the force of friction. Absolutely! Imagine all of us just slipping all the time in a vain effort to walk. Oh my God! <laughs> I can imagine that. You have got quite an imagination, Binny. I must say that. Thank you, Professor. So now you understand the importance of friction well? Oh yes, to a large extent. Um, but, uh, Professor? Ah, the but again. Tell me what is it? Oh, nothing. I mean, I was just thinking, 
Can you give me some more specific examples of friction in daily life? Oh, of course, Binny. Why not? In fact, that will help my friends sitting there at home and learning from us understand the concept of friction better and realize its importance. Let's check out our Do You Know section for this. Do you know that friction plays an essential role in our daily life? Like what? Like uh, in writing and erasing. Oh, how does friction help in that? Writing with a pencil requires friction. You could not hold a pencil in your hand without friction. It would slip out when you tried to hold it to write. Oh, yes. Even the graphite pencil lead would not make a mark on the paper without friction. Similarly, a pencil eraser uses friction to rub off mistakes written by the pencil lead. Rubbing by an eraser wears out the eraser due to friction, while the particles worn off gather up the pencil lead from the paper. Wow! Never thought of that! Similarly, your car would not move if it wasn't for the friction of the tyres against the street. With no friction, the tyres would just spin. Oh yes, then we could not stop also without the friction of the brakes and the tyres. Alright, let's have a quick recap. Friction is a force that acts between any two surfaces in contact with a tendency to move. Friction always opposes the motion between the two surfaces in contact. Frictional force depends on the weight of the body. Frictional force is independent of the area in contact. Wow! I never ever realized there are so many important forces working around us that make our lives so easy. Yes, Binny. This whole universe is full of such wonderful forces and mysteries of life. Wow! Thanks for explaining, Professor. You are always welcome, Binny. And so are my dear friends sitting there. Anyways, time for us to say goodbye to our dear friends. But we will see you again soon. Till then, keep exploring the wonder world of science. Bye!